This video is a follow-up to the Givens Cheat Sheet video. In this video, though, we are going to be talking about how to find more congruent parts when we are working with congruent triangle proofs. So in a proof, we can elaborate on keywords from the Givens, such as parallel, perpendicular, midpoint, and bisect in order to find congruent parts. This lesson is going to cover additional ways to find corresponding congruent parts. So I have gone ahead and filled in some notes for the the three methods we're going to talk about today. The first is a property or a rule that's called the reflexive property. It basically is a rule that says any figure is congruent to itself. It seems very obvious. Um, it also says that um, certain things are equal to itself. It's almost like me saying that five equals five, right? That seems very obvious. We could say in a picture that angle ABC is congruent to angle ABC. Anything is congruent to itself. Because it seems so obvious, we have to talk about when is the reflexive property best used, and it's best used when triangles share a side or angle. Our second thing we're going to be talking about is vertical angles. Those are congruent angles that are formed by intersecting lines. Intersecting lines are lines that cross, and vertical angles are opposite one another. And last, the isosceles triangle theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, the angles opposite those sides are also congruent to one another. Okay, and here's a diagram that indicates that. So let's first take a look at some diagrams. And in each diagram, we're going to decide, would this proof indicate the use of the reflexive property, vertical angles, and or the isosceles triangle theorem? Okay, it could be multiple answers. If we take a look at A, let's go in order here. Would the reflexive property best be used here? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to put reflexive property. And the reason that is, is because the two triangles do share a side. They share side BD. If I highlight over this triangle in one color, for instance, and I highlight this triangle in the other, you can see clearly that they both share side BD. I do not have any vertical angles in this picture. There are no intersecting lines. But I do have a triangle. I'm going to erase the highlighting here. I do have a triangle that has two congruent angles, and that means it must also have two congruent sides. And that means I would use the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay. When you use the isosceles triangle theorem, it's almost like if I go in and take a marker here, a white marker, it's almost like we're pretending the middle is not here and we're just looking at one big triangle. Okay. All right, let's take a look at another example here and see if we can figure out what applies. For B, I do not have the reflexive property because the two triangles do not share a side or angle. They do share a point C, but we're only looking for sides or angles. I don't have vertical angles because I don't have two intersecting lines. Intersecting lines look like the letter X. If you were to turn your head sideways here, this really looks like the letter K. So I have no intersecting lines, and I also don't have an isosceles triangle. So B, none of the three apply. In C, here's an example that includes intersecting lines and vertical angles. There's that X shape in there. So this is an example with vertical angles. The two triangles don't share a side or angle. Remember, a point is not going to work, and we'll see later on with proofs why that is. Okay. Um, and I don't have an isosceles triangle here. D is an example that would use the reflexive property. And I know that because the two triangles share side PR. Again, if you need to, highlight the two triangles and you can clearly see here that they both have side PR. All right, E, here's an example. We have vertical angles. F would be an example of the reflexive property because they share side BD. 
And it would be an example of the isosceles triangle theorem because the big triangle ABC has two congruent sides, therefore it would have two congruent angles. G is another example of vertical angles. We have intersecting lines there. And H is an example of the reflexive property because the two triangles share side BD. Now let's take a look at how this might look like, look in a uh, proof format. So it says in numbers two through five, determine what information could best be added to the blanks based upon the diagram or given information. So it's important to note here that these little proof setups don't have numbers. There's no set proof statement to these proofs. Um, we don't know what might have come before or after it. We are not necessarily provided all of the givens. So this is just some statement in the proof and some reason in the proof. That's why they're not numbered here. Number two is an indicator of the reflexive property being best used because the two triangles share a side. What side do they share? They share side BD. So in a proof, I would say BD is congruent to BD by the reflexive property. In number three, IE and BD intersect. That's a key that you have vertical angles. We can see that in the picture here. And let's see if we can fill in these blanks. Angle ACB and angle ECD are vertical angles. And remember, reasons in a proof always justify how we know that statement. Well, I know that because the problem told me I have intersecting lines, and I know that intersecting lines form vertical angles. I also know that vertical angles are congruent, and I'll fill in the names of them here. So I know angle ACB and angle ECD must be congruent because vertical angles are congruent. Okay, in number four, we are given that AB is congruent to CB. So let's mark that off in our picture. And this one's a little different because the given is already telling us things that are congruent. When we see that, let's take a look because sometimes we are using the isosceles triangle theorem. And if you look at what I just highlighted here, it's the big triangle, not the two that look congruent, but the big one, triangle ABC. And we know that the two sides of it are congruent. That must mean it's isosceles, which means the two angles at the bottom, the base angles, must also be congruent. So I know that angle A is congruent to angle C, and our reason is if two sides of a triangle are congruent, the angles opposite those sides are congruent. And again, we're looking at it as if we're just taking a look at the big triangle for a second without BD in the middle. Last number five is the same thing, but the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. We're given that angle A and angle C are congruent. That means triangle ABC, the big triangle must be isosceles. And therefore that tells me sides AB and CB are congruent. And that's because if two angles of a triangle are congruent, the sides opposite those angles are congruent. Okay, basically the reasons for number four and five just have the order of the words or the order of the two pieces swapped. So in number four, we were given the two sides congruent and number five, we were given the two angles congruent. So this lesson taught us a little bit more about how to add on to proofs with the reflexive property, vertical angles, and the isosceles triangle theorem.